And then all of a sudden the kind of the conversation escalated because I, I, I decided at that point to go public about something which I have not talked about today, which happened to me in January when I was sexually assaulted, which I had reported to the police. Mm -hmm. The police had been amazing with me, but they had been quite honest with me about how difficult it was going to be to bring a prosecution. Um, and so I explained all this on air to try and give some context to just how serious it is that um, some people genuinely don't understand where the line is between consent and non-consent. And, um, and, then, and then all of a sudden the conversation escalated into a kind of um, an inquiry of me about my behaviour and why I hadn't reported it by a certain time. And um, did I really know that, you know, CCTV footage is routinely deleted after 30 days, which is what the police told me. And when I repeated that on air, that was questioned. And then finally it was, uh, well, if, if the police won't help you, um, you needed to go further somehow. Are you not um, concerned that, that this brute will then go and do this to other women? So, so it was kind of it was a kind of they questioning. They were giving you responsibility they, for something. They basically that were giving me the whole you. responsibility and suggesting that my um, interaction with the police, you know, somehow made me comfortable. It was a very bizarre way to end the conversation. And also, I was told to um, be quiet. I was told I was very patronising. Um, I was definitely this was, on air. this was on air. I was told I was very patronising. I said no, I'm very passionate in my defence, and. Um, it was just incredibly traumatising. And then what happened after was actually equally as upsetting because the station, for whatever reason, decided to um, show me the video of, of James on air. In which because this was an interview done this was an down, interview the down, line, down, down the line. line. So I didn't on the go phone, into you the couldn't studio. see his no. reaction face to face. No. So they decided to tweet the video, and um, he can be seen to be laughing when I actually described the assault, which was just kind of boggling to me. And... Um, this went out to thousands of people and it was retweeted at me several times over the, over the course of 24 hours. And then there was an article written about the encounter, um, kind of, in my opinion, reframing it as a way of, you know, making out that I had been too feminist and gone too far and been all male blaming. So you went on air and decided to share an experience that had happened to you in order to illustrate a point and you yeah. felt that you were blamed for what happened to you and I was just you know I, the, all the kinds of conversation was that you hate I was told that you you know there's a point in the video where James points his finger at me I'm not present mm -hmm. and is sort of saying this is exactly what you know you people do I'm paraphrasing now but basically saying that this is a kind of blaming all men and then I was forced to say no I have an amazing partner I have an amazing brother which is really just, to defend this, yourself besides the point so what happened after that interview so um, in terms of uh, contact with me, absolutely nothing. And so the next morning I was in the position of having to call the radio station and, and say, what happened last night? Mm. And um, I was given the general complaints email address. Um, I was told somebody that the message would be passed on. 24 more hours passed, nothing happened. And then at the end of the week, a statement has now been released by talk radio telling us that James has been suspended and that they had made errors um, both from the presenting and the production side. Mm -hmm. But the real issue for me going forward now is like, you know, I've talked about my story. The response was as it was. People on Twitter have been absolutely amazing. I've got to say the public really is not on the side, in my opinion, um, of this conversation. There were so many people um, that were so upset as victims themselves listening to that content, which they found very troubling. Because that is the whole point of the Me Too campaign, mm -hmm. is to give men and women the courage to come forward and feel exactly. that their stories will be believed. And th as you said, this is the first time you had told this story yeah. publicly. Obviously, you went through all the official channels, you told the police, I'm sure your close family were aware of what happened, but you went public and it wasn't the reaction you anticipated. Has James Whale approached you to apologise, to offer some kind of explanation for his reaction? No, he hasn't. Um, and obviously I've reported it to Ofcom, as some other people can do. That's again an official line that we can take. I think what's interesting is that when you read the Ofcom guidelines, there's actually not any specific description about how you deal with victims of either sexual assault or serious crime. And maybe it's time for Ofcom to update those regulations. That's what I'd like to see happen. And do you think it's also part of a wider conversation that not everyone appears to know what constitutes rape? Because you were yes. described how you were sexually assaulted. It mm -hmm. appears that he sort of questioned that as a form of rape. 
Yes, he did. And, and look, lots of people don't understand the law around sexual assault. That's a truth. And so me going on to talk about it and being very frank was my attempt to help people with that knowledge and help people that maybe who had been attacked themselves wouldn't understand it as such. So w what became quickly apparent though is that the whole team was very much out of their depth with the conversation. They had a number of options during that live interview to decide to take it somewhere else or even end the, they could have end ended the call with me if they felt out of their depth. They didn't do that and then their response after was equally um, baffling to me. But you know what I want now is for this to never be able to happen to someone else again. The idea that a victim who doesn't have media experience like I do could have been on air and questioned like that is absolutely appalling to me. Mm. So I just want to make sure that we have new regulations in place to stop this ever happening again. Okay, well, Nikki, thank you so much for coming in to talk about that experience. I just want to read out a statement from Talk Radio that's since be, been retweeted by James Whale, who, of course, has been suspended following that interview. It says, uh, James Whale's interview with Nikki Hodgson on Monday was conducted in a manner that didn't reflect the values of the station and completely lacked sensitivity when she discussed her personal story. The style of broadcasting is not something that Talk Radio supports or encourages, and we have taken the decision to suspend James Whale pending a full investigation. They go on to say that this incident saw regrettable errors made by both the production and presenting teams, and we are taking measures to ensure that they are not repeated again. Um, Nikki, thank you very much for coming in to talk to thank us you. about that.